When I told my decision to go back to my hometown for childbirth, my MIL said. By all means, go back. I don't want to see your face. I was genuinely happy to hear that, as I had been waiting for those words. You won't be seeing me again, so rest assured. What? I'm Amanda, turning 28. My mother passed away from illness when I was just two years old. My father ran a clothing company with a hundred-year tradition, so he was always busy with work, and my grandmother took care of me. He was very strict, and I lived my life exactly as he dictated. As a result, I never had a boyfriend, but I had resigned myself to that as fate. After graduating from college, I briefly worked as my father's secretary in his company, but he made me resign because he said it was difficult to work with family. I haven't had a job since. My father insisted I didn't need to work. But seeing my college friends get jobs, fall in love, and get married made me want to work too. One night, I said to my father, Dad, can I get a job? No. He dismissed it outright without listening to my reasons. Why not? Because there's no need for you to work. But I need to gain more experiences in society, too. Amanda, don't talk back. I'm not talking back. I'm not saying anything wrong. Amanda, you should just stay quietly at home. If you're going to say that, I'll leave home. I'll leave and go to work from there. Amanda, enough. No. I'm an adult, aren't I? I won't always do as you say. I left the room crying and continued crying in my own room. After a while, I called my friend from university, Sarah. Can I come to your place right now? Sure, but what's wrong? And can you even go out at this hour? I can't, but I'll find a way. Can I stay at your place for a while? Sarah lived in a luxury apartment with three rooms, a gift from her parents. There must be some reason, right? Okay, come over, but be careful. I quietly packed my suitcase and left without my father noticing. I left a note on my desk, saying I was staying at a friend's house. I got into a taxi and headed to Sarah's apartment. Upon arrival, Sarah had my favorite coffee ready for me. Sarah, thank you. What happened, Amanda? I told her all about the argument with my father and leaving home. That's terrible, Amanda. You have no freedom at all. Hearing that made me cry again. Until now, I just did as my father said, thinking it was normal. But suddenly, I wanted freedom. That's normal, Amanda. It's strange that you're not allowed to work. I want to have fun and spend time with different people, too. And? Does your dad know you're here? I left a note saying I was going to a friend's house, but my dad doesn't know my friends, you know. He might be frantically searching for me right now? Probably. Let's just go to bed for now, it's late anyway. I was really tired too. Sarah set up a separate room for me to stay in, and that's where I slept. The next day, Sarah went off to work. I checked my phone and saw about 10 missed calls from my dad, so I felt a bit bad for him and sent a text saying he didn't need to worry. That evening, after work, Sarah called me. Come out for drinks with us tonight. Having hardly any experience in the working world and never having drunk alcohol, I was excited to be invited out. When I arrived at the spot Sarah had chosen, Sarah and two men were waiting. Sorry for making you wait. By the way, who are these two? Sarah pointed to the shorter man and said, This is my boyfriend. And the tall one, he's on the lookout for a girlfriend. The tall man introduced himself with a refreshing smile. Nice to meet you, I'm Jack. Pleased to meet you. Nice to meet you too. I'm Amanda. From that meeting, our relationship began. Jack worked for a small clothing company, which momentarily reminded me of my father's company, but I quickly forgot about that. Jack's family was just his mother, he never mentioned why and I never asked. One day, Jack said to me, Let me meet your dad sometime. I had been messaging my dad since leaving home, but I wasn't ready to return yet, so I didn't want to meet him. I'll think about it. But I'd like to meet your mom. 
Sure. When? We can even do it today if you like. Today? Really? Then I need to buy some gifts. Yeah, my mom loves that kind of stuff. Later on, I found out his mother wasn't exactly fond of that kind of stuff. She was the type to get very upset if I didn't bring anything. On the way to Jack's house, we stopped by a bakery and bought a cake. When we arrived, his mother was waiting at the front door. I asked Jack why his MIL was there, and he said he'd texted her from the bakery. The MIL looked me over and asked, What's your name? Ah, uh, Amanda. Nice to meet you. What do you do for a living? I'm currently unemployed, but I plan to start working soon. Are you just loafing around then? Must be nice, being a rich girl. I'm not rich. That's why I'm looking to work. Don't talk back. What do your parents do? My mom passed away when I was young. My dad is a salaried worker. Hmm. Jack, who had been watching our conversation, then said. How long are we going to stand here chatting? Let's go inside. Right. By the way, Jack, did she bring anything? Surely she didn't come empty-handed? I hurriedly handed the paper bag with the cake to his mother. Um. I bought some cake. She snatched the bag like she was grabbing a bad deal, peeked inside, and said. I'm not really interested. But. I'll take it anyway. After just a few minutes of talking to her, I took an instant dislike to my MIL. And then, I felt sorry for anyone who had to call such a person their MIL. When I entered the living room, the MIL started asking me various questions again, but I only gave her non-committal answers. Yet, the MIL kept on talking, never wanting to stop, making me feel like I was being interrogated like a suspect. The questioning was so one-sided that I started to feel tired and wanted to leave, and when there was a break in the interrogation, I told Jack. Jack, I think I'll be heading home now. When I said that, the MIL turned red with anger. What, you hate spending time with me that much? You've been giving me nothing but half-hearted responses. Calm down, Mom. Jack. Why did you bring such a rude woman here? There are plenty of better women out there. I got angry at the MIL's words and said. What part of me is rude? Please tell me clearly. If there's something I should fix, I will. As I said this, the MIL got even more agitated and said. You're such a cheeky girl. All you need to do is answer what I ask. I have been answering your questions. You don't like me, do you? I can tell. I wanted to answer that question truthfully, but I couldn't. I'm just tired and would like to go home. Well, I'm appalled. Still saying that. I wonder what kind of upbringing your parents gave you. They must not be good parents. I'd like to see what they look like. I was very sad to hear her speak ill of my parents and ended up crying. Oh dear, now you think crying will get you off the hook. If you want to leave that badly, then go ahead. I'll feel better. And this, I'll give your cheap cake to my little Charlie. Though, being a dog, he's too good for such cheap stuff. The MIL pointed at the cake I brought, laughing. Mom, stop it already. Jack, you have no eye for women. When Jack was scolded like that by his mother, he retorted with a frustrated look. Why are you always so confrontational? Can't you act more mature? The MIL, rebuked by Jack, suddenly lost her energy and said in a low voice. I just want you to have a good wife, Jack. I get that, but... I'm an adult now. You don't need to worry about me all the time. Just let me handle it. After Jack said this, the MIL, with tears filling her eyes, left the room. As I was leaving the house with tears in my eyes, Jack followed me out and said, Amanda, I'm sorry my mom said such terrible things. She's just jealous, thinking she's losing me to you. I'll talk to her. Please don't be put off and come visit again. I'm hurt by what she said about my parents. I don't want to see your mother again. The moment I said this, sadness overwhelmed me again, and I burst into tears, throwing myself into Jack's arms. 
Jack held me, but after a while said. Shall we go somewhere together? I nodded slightly, and we left the house together. Jack drove me to a beachside in California, sitting on a bench on the sand, staring at the sea forever. Two months passed. I was pregnant. When I discussed it with Jack, he said. Let's get married. We don't have to have a ceremony, but we'll make it official. And is it okay to live at my place? My salary isn't great, so I can't afford to rent an apartment. I'll make sure my mom doesn't say anything unnecessary to you. I wanted to avoid living with that Mael, but I had no other place to go. All right. I'll try to get along with your mother. And so, I ended up living with the Mil. Since I was getting married, I went home to tell my father. When I got home, my father was happy to see me. It's good to see you looking well. It's been a while since I've seen your face, though you've called from time to time. I'm sorry. But there's something I need to tell you. As I said that, my father's expression changed instantly. I told my father about meeting Jack, being pregnant, and that we were going to register our marriage. My father listened in silence, and after I finished my story, he said just one thing to me. Well then, congratulations. I sure hope to see my grandchild soon. His smile seemed forced. Thanks, Dad. I'm sorry for being such a disappointment. As I said this through tears, my father was crying too. I had only thought he would be angry, so his kind words were even more painful. I was set to move into my mother-in-law's place. After I left home, Sarah, who had taken care of me all this time, said. Show me that cute baby's face soon. Yeah, I will. And you, get married soon too. I want to, but he's so indecisive. But I guess it'll work out somehow. Let's go out for a meal together again. I had planned to move on Sunday, but my MIL mentioned it was a bad day, so I had to change it to Saturday. The move was completed smoothly on Saturday morning. During the move, while the movers were carrying things, my MIL just stood there watching. She was told several times by the workers, please move back, it's dangerous here, but she wouldn't budge. After the move, my MIL called me over and said, you did give something to those men, right? I was confused. Huh? She must have thought I was pretending not to understand, as she walked away from me and handed something to what seemed to be the leader of the movers. Seeing that, I realized what she meant, but when she came back, she said. Since Amanda seemed reluctant to pay, I did it for you. But of course, you'll pay me back later. She then told me an outrageous amount. It was way beyond common sense, so I said. Did you give them that much? Oh, was that wrong? It's not wrong, but I think it's a bit much. It's the thought that counts. Skimp on that, and you'll bring bad luck upon yourself. I'm not being stingy, but... I didn't say more, fearing another argument. My MIL looked as if she was right about everything. Then, Jack showed up and said to my MIL. What's going on? What did you say to Amanda? Nothing. She just said that and walked away. Are you okay? I've told her off before. Thank you. I didn't mention to Jack the near argument I had with my MIL. If I did, and he told her, it would only make her dislike me more. After the move, my MIL hardly spoke to me. She was clearly avoiding me. There were times when we didn't speak for a week, and I found it quite peaceful. One day, Jack brought home some company documents in an envelope. The envelope was marked with ABC Textiles Incorporated, a name I recognized from when I used to work at my father's company, a subcontractor for his business. I asked Jack. Is that envelope from your company? Yeah, why? Just asking. I realized I never knew much about your work. I never told Jack that his company was a subcontractor to my father's company. Somehow, I felt it was better not to say anything. Yeah, it's just a small subcontracting firm. If the parent company cuts us off, we'll go bankrupt immediately, and all the employees will be out of a job. Jack smiled with a lonely look on his face. From the following month, Jack started coming home late. 
and since he returned late looking pale, I asked. You've been coming home late recently, and you seem down. What's going on? Jack replied softly. The company is in trouble. What? In trouble, as in it's going to go bankrupt? He nodded slightly and began to explain. The parent company that has been ordering from us suddenly said they're cutting our orders in half. Now, our CEO is begging them daily to keep the orders as they were, and we, the employees, are trying to find new clients. But if neither works out, we're going bankrupt. After hearing this, I thought about asking my father to help Jack's company, but I knew it would be pointless. My father is strict with business, he would never help a vendor out of personal sentiment. There must be a reason why he reduced the orders. I decided to tell Jack that my father's company was the parent company he was working for. At first, Jack was shocked, but then he looked at me with hopeful eyes and said, Amanda, please. Ask your father not to reduce the orders. I'm sorry. My father is strict about business, and he never mixes it with personal feelings. Can't you ask him anyway, even if it's no use? It's pointless. When I said that, Jack kneeled down and begged. Please, I'm begging you like this. Jack, stop. Don't do this. Okay, I know it's no use, but I'll ask my father. Jack looked up, tears streaming down his face, relieved. That night, I called my father and told him about Jack's tearful request. ABC Textiles, that was Jack's company? Then we must help them. I was surprised. I had expected my strict father to say, don't interfere with business matters. But I'll set two conditions. First, we'll continue the business with ABC Textiles as before, but Jack must resign and work for my company. Second, you and Jack will live in my house. Is that okay? So, you're saying Jack should transfer to your company? I'll talk to him about that. But why should Jack and I live in your house? Father answered reluctantly. I just want you to be close, that's all. I understand. But why did you decide to cut the business with ABC Textiles in half? A new company came in offering very good terms, so I decided to do business with them. But upon closer inspection, I found out they often break their promises, so I was thinking of stopping the deal. So, ABC Textiles would have been fine even if I hadn't asked? That's questionable. Father said, laughing, which made me laugh too. After hanging up, I immediately told Jack about the conditions set by my father. Jack was glad that the crisis at ABC Textiles was over, but he seemed hesitant about moving to my father's company. It's hard for me to consider working at your father's company. I've put so much effort into ABC Textiles, and I have many colleagues there. I'll talk to my father about it. I called my father again and relayed what Jack had said, and my father responded. I thought he might say that. He's a responsible and good man. Fine, he can continue at ABC Textiles, but moving to my house is non-negotiable. Okay, got it. After the call, Jack was overjoyed when I told him. I said to Jack, by the way, don't tell your MIL about my father's company. She might start saying all sorts of things. Right, got it. A few weeks later, I decided to go back to my parents' home for childbirth. At my parents' house, only my father and my elderly grandmother live, but that was still much better than being taken care of by my MIL for childbirth. I took the chance when my MIL was drinking tea in the living room and spoke to her. MIL, about my childbirth, I'm thinking of going back to my parents' house. It's just my father and grandmother, but my grandmother is still very lively and healthy. Upon hearing this, my MIL looked at me with eyes full of hatred and said, By all means, go back. I don't want to see your face. I wasn't surprised by her words and felt nothing. You won't have to see me anymore, so please be assured. Huh? What I mean is, I won't be coming back here. And soon, Jack will also be moving to my parents' house. What are you talking about? Jack is too busy with his company to even think about moving. It's all settled now. At that moment, Jack arrived and said to his mother. Mom, my company is fine now. 
Amanda helped me out. What do you mean? Amanda's father was the president of the parent company of my firm. What? Shocked by these words, my MIL raised her voice and after staring at me for a while, she said. Amanda, I had no idea you were the daughter of the president of Jack's company's parent company. I've been very rude to you. I apologize. She bowed deeply. It's all right now. May I ask one favor? I would like to live with your family at your parents' house. Mom, that's not possible. You should stay here. I understand. I don't think I can live with you, MIL, as I would be reminded of all the things you've said to me in the past. Please, I won't say anything anymore, just please. My MIL said this with tears in her eyes. It may seem cold, but I cannot do that. Then, she prostrated herself on the floor, rubbing her forehead against it, and said, Please, I don't want to live apart from Jack. Please. No, I'm sorry. Mom, stop it. If you had been kind to Amanda before, we could have lived together, but this is the consequence of your actions. Give it up. To my weeping Mael on the floor, I said, Mael, you've reaped what you sowed. Half a year later, Jack, our newborn Emily, and I went to the Mil's house. But the house was silent and cold. Jack called out loudly, eh, Mom, but there was no response. Jack, did you tell her we were coming? No, I thought I'd surprise her. Where could she be? Just then. A gaunt figure of my Mil emerged from the bathroom, but she showed no change in expression upon seeing us. The kitchen was cluttered with remnants of instant noodles and dirty dishes piled up. Mom, are you okay? She glanced at Jack but said nothing. M.I.L., I brought your favorite cake. As I held out the cake, my M.I.L. rushed over, snatched it, and devoured it greedily. Once again, I said the words I had said before. M.I.L., you've reaped what you sowed.